Check out our sponsors, Nature's Blends. They specialize in premium Ethiopian black seed products. The website is in the description link below. You can also use the discount code SALAM10 for 10% of their products. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are well, inshallah, and welcome back. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, before I start, I want to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most just, all praises, glory, and gratitude belong to Him. Um, so, obviously, a lot of people, me, myself, I don't know about Muhammad Hijab, uh, but a lot of people have been pressuring us about Afghanistan situation and talk about it. Why are you not talking about it? You talk about everything. Why are you not talking about this? So, I just want to make something clear. First, first of all, I've got two. Brilliant guests here today. I thought Brother Rahmatullah Nawroz and Sister Marwa. Uh, Brother Rahmatullah, I know Brother, Rahmat, uh, Brother Rahmatullah. Um, I think we have met a couple of times uh, and he's bought me a gift as well, which is the Afghan clothing. He hasn't given to me yet, but in October he'll be giving it and I'll be definitely trying it on and maybe do a little YouTube video. Sister Marwa yeah. is someone I do not know, but I did do a request um, on my Instagram because I thought it's important to have a sister's take. Uh, Sister Marwa is from, uh, she's Afghani. Um, and yeah, she's going to be um, adding some things, inshallah, a lot of things to this discussion. So today I'm going to be a student and I'm going to have Sister Marwa and Brother Rahmatullah as my teachers who are going to educate me to the whole thing that's been escalating and what's been going on. So may Allah bless uh, both of you guys. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so we've got Brother Rahmatullah, you are in Malaysia? I'm in Germany right now. All oh, right, you're in Germany. I've moved to Germany since three years. You don't even oh, know. Oh, wow. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't no. even know where I am sometimes myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's good. Sister Marwa, you are from? California. You're from California. Okay. Um, all right. So tell us a bit about yourself, not in detail. Um, you're both Afghani. Yeah. So ask Baba Rahmatullah to start with you. Jazakallah khairah for having this session and opportunity to speak about Afghanistan. Uh, I'm heavily involved in Afghanistan. Uh, alhamdulillah, I'm running the organization. In fact, two organizations in Afghanistan with more than 50 employees and also a number of schools, my own family. Uh, I'm the only person from the family that is outside of Afghanistan. So the situation, I'm aware, I'm following and closing. And uh, inshallah, this session will be beneficial because I have interacted with the previous government, with the current regime, and I've met right from the ministers to the governors and I've worked with them, with each one of them. And inshallah, I will be sharing those stories, um, my interaction with the previous ministers and interaction with the current regime right now. Uh, and I'm based in Germany. So that's all uh, I think for this discussion, inshallah. Okay, Barakah um, Fiqh. Sister Mara? Jazakallah, uh, brother, for having this seminar discussion. Um, I am based in California. Um, I have never been to Afghanistan, but I am uh, a young adult who wants to speak out for um, her country and especially the women there because there are many uh, bias and propaganda going around on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, on all of these social media platforms. And I would like to say a few words about those. Okay, that's good. Excellent. So can I ask both of you guys a question? Did you guys, because you said you was not born in Afghanistan, Sister Marwa. Did your mm -hmm. family, like, did they, when did they leave? Did, is it because of the war or is it just outside the war? Uh, same mm -hmm. question to you, Brother Rahmatullah, after, inshallah, Sister Marwa, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, just hearing from my dad and my mom's uh, stories, uh, they left be once the, the first time the Taliban came to Kabul. So um, the situation wasn't good and my parents uh, did not want their kids growing up in such a place with war and uh, crime so they decided to um, come to Tajikistan and then after Tajikistan they um, illegally uh, went from Tajikistan to Russia and then from Russia we came to uh, America. So when was this? This was what 20 years ago? Uh, yeah, 19, 1996. Okay, yeah, so about about 20 years ago. Okay, and Brother mm -hmm. Rahmatullah, did you, you or your family, was there a reason specifically you left Afghanistan because of that? Um, I did not leave because of the war. My whole family is there. I'm the only person from my family that was outside of Pakistan. And I went to Malaysia for educational purposes, and then I moved to Germany for uh, family reasons, but it wasn't because of the war. Okay, um, and mm -hmm. you, uh, Sister Mara, you're from Kabul, your family? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Brother Rahmatullah, you I'm are? from Nuristan, which is a, a bit uh, remote uh, province from Kabul. But we are okay. living in Kabul. My family is living in Kabul. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's your okay? So let, let's go 20, 20 plus maybe years ago, mm-hmm. um, or exactly 20 years ago, actually, in September, it's going to be 9 11 happens. How did it impact you, um, Sister Maro? I don't know how old you was then, but I don't know if you remember it. But how did it impact both of you guys? Because it did impact Muslims as a whole. I can remember when that happened. I used to live outside London. I was not a Muslim. And uh, I, I was getting abuse, you know, because I looked Muslim. Um, so how did it impact you both? Do um, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so when 9-11 happened, I was one years old. <laughs> so okay. I don't remember it that much. But just hearing from my dad and my mom's perspective, uh, when we were in Russia, um, uh we in russia my dad he had like in russia there was a lot of racism against muslims and so when when 9 11 happened that kind of escalated to its max uh to the point where my dad when he would go to work he would have to um either take me or my uh younger siblings because the police would stop him um so that's that. but I don't really remember, like from my own personal experience, I don't remember okay. 9-11. Okay. Well, Rahmat, yeah. I think before 9-11, I would like to give them a bit of background. Yes. Why 9-11 happened, why America invaded Afghanistan and so on and so forth. Yeah. Just to, I'm, I'm not going to speak with more statistics and dates and year. I will go with the flow of the discussion so it's easy for everybody to understand what happened. Yes, please, yeah. It wasn't the trade center which made America to invade Afghanistan. Okay. It, uh, America was involved in Afghanistan from 1991. Soviet? The Soviet? Yes. They were funding the Mujahideen through Pakistan and Saudi Arabia to fight against the Soviet Union. Yes. And when they fought, the money was given as a form of donation or zakat, so on and so forth, from people from the Gulf countries like Emirat, Saudi, channeling through Pakistan to Afghanistan. Okay. And there were camps in Pakistan, which were the training centers, the camps, which there are a lot of famous camps in, uh, in, in Peshawar, as well as in Khabar uh, Pukhtunkhwa, in the whole area, there are camps, which were actually yeah. famous for this work. They funded that money to fight the Soviet Union. And in 1991, Soviet Union collapsed and they were forced to leave Afghanistan. And the funding which was given to the government through Soviet Union, of course, that funding stopped. The government had nothing in, in the banks or reserve. So the Soviet, the Russians are gone and the Najibullah government was in power. So what happened, those Mujahideens, which were funded by the Americans, the Americans were closely involved with them, but they took tribalism like Pashtun, Tajik, Uzbek, and uh, Hazara, they took tribalism and they fought each other because of power. One wanted to become the prime minister, second wanted to become the minister or the president. They were fighting each other to a degree that the rape was common. The blocks and every road was there. Uh, For example, Pashtun wouldn't be able to travel to Tajik uh, area. Tajik wouldn't be able to travel to Pashtun area. Uh, My sister is here, I'm sorry to say that. They literally chopped the breast of women in front of their men so they can degrade them what they did. They chopped their heads, both parties, all the warlords were involved in killing machines. In fact, there were roadblocks and the man would stand without any pant and would tell you when you're crossing that roadblock, either you pay me money, I will rape your woman in front of you. The man of the, standing without any pants, can you believe that? Mm. In fact, there were famous people which happened to later become the parliament MPs known by the dogs because they used to eat and bite people and chalk their meats with their teeth. That was the situation what happened. And CIA was heavily involved with these warlords, supporting them. For example, among them was Steve Cool, uh, Black Cooper. They were literally in working with Northern Alliance uh, and forming different groups in that area. Mm. So what happened in 19... 19- 94, the first military operation started by Taliban and Kandahar to defend the people, the ordinary people from these warlords and to protect them. Mm-hmm. And actually this started with the rape case of a girl who was raped forcefully. And uh, this is a true story. If I'm a warlord and I see your wife is beautiful, I will just knock your door and take your wife and kill you. That's a true story. I mean, people can label it whatever they want it. So there was no jihad, no Islam whatsoever. 
in a group, Taliban were mostly people who were uh, sent by their parents to Pakistan to learn Islamic education. They were in madrasas. So in Kandahar, the first activity started to defend an innocent girl who was raped mm. by a warlord. Yeah. And then the movement started. And Pakistan, they say to it, okay, it's a great movement. Why not we send all the students from madrasas? They send them. So in 1996, in September, they took over the government. Why people supported them? Because they were less corrupt. They were saying, okay, we are going with the Sharia law mm -hmm. and we will not harm anybody, protect everyone. There will be safety. And what happened in those areas, even in the time of Taliban were in power, they couldn't control the northern side of Afghanistan, like Northern Alliance, which was Panjshir, Parwan, and these areas were not controlled. And especially mm -hmm. those areas were mostly led by famous Commander uh, Masood, Ahmad Shah Masood, yeah. And CIA was literally funding those people to fight the Taliban. Mm -hmm. At the same time, working with some areas of Taliban, with some of the Taliban to make sure that the country is not going in the hands of Russians again, or the Chinese don't come over. Mm -hmm. And there were economical reasons, which we will discuss later on, yeah. uh, which was a pipeline from Tajikistan, which call it TAPI, uh, which involves Pakistan, India, and Afghanistan. And Afghanistan was a core strategic location for that pipeline. So therefore, they need to have somebody who can they trust in that area. So in 9-11, it could be a debatable matter. We can debate it today, but we don't have to do that. And I don't have to go into details. 9-11 wasn't uh, something that was done by the Afghani people. None of the citizens were Afghan, uh, non Iraqi. They were mostly Saudi citizen. And they took that as a point of a reason to attack Iraq and Afghanistan and then Libya. Yeah. I personally believe as... Professor Steve, uh, Steve Kuhl, that they believe that 9-11 was an inside job. It was a reason for America to you know, allow themselves to go to the Iraq yeah. and go to the Afghanistan and have war. And when 9-11 yeah. happened, there's, there's so, a, there's, sorry, there's, you know there's a website called Rethink 9-11. I can remember when I was looking into Islam, I, was, I, I joined this group called Rethink 9-11. It was 2,000 individual experts and demol there were demolition experts and scientists who were basically going against this whole narrative, you know, how the buildings fell to World Trade Center 7, falling down, feel, uh, free fall, uh, with just office fire, uh, the Pentagon being hit, no cameras, um, the whole of the Pentagon, like the wings. There's so much stuff. It's unbelievable. And it, there's a I whole mean, discussion about, did this even happen uh, in the yes. context of the way it happened, let alone was... Um, Afghanistan involved when it was a Saudi citizen that, that mm -hmm. was doing it. So it's all mishmash. Uh, but regardless, that's all discussion on its own. Yeah, let's, let's even say that happens. Let's agree on that part with yeah. most people that they say it happened, it happened, okay, fine. So why did, did they invade Afghanistan? Because of Osama bin Laden. And interestingly enough, you could find other means to pressure a country to give up an individual. Like you can stop the financial institution yeah you can blacklist them you can work at them you can do tariff on them there are hundreds of other ways which are non-war related ways that you can pressure a country to yeah. give up an individual that's yeah. number one what they're doing with iran they're doing with iran and the, the, we will come to those discussions anyway yeah so they did not do that they came to afghanistan and without the approval of even Security Council of United States Nation, there was no approval. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't discussed publicly in, in terms of that. There were three reasons why they came to Afghanistan. Number one was economical reason. The, the defense contractor were making huge amount of money. We will talk about them spending in Afghanistan. And number two, the geographical location, they want to have a co close contact with Russia and China. So they ha had to be there. And also, they want to keep control of Pakistan in order. So, yeah, they're, they're in area. So they invaded in Afghanistan. Once they invaded, I remember I was I was born in uh, in 1993. Yeah. The first missile hit our province, not closely. We were living in Lagman. It hit in Jalabad, and the American invaded. Nobody knew. And the discussion was going on for the airspace and the land. They discussed with with India, mm. and the India couldn't agree. They discussed with Pakistan. Pakistan agreed. And there were people involved. I don't have to go to the details of each person who was involved in um, Nawaz Sharif and all those people. Yeah. So they invaded Afghanistan. So what they did, I'm going to jump on the point. Yeah. They again brought those people, those warlords, which was despised by the people and yeah. gave way to Taliban to come and put them in the position and the authority and make them, for example, 
the people. They, they killed the whole uh, Taliban regime. They killed half a million children. More than one million Afghan were killed. And they brought the same people, people like, okay, let me make this a disc, uh, disclaimer. disclaimer. I have to make this. Mm. I'm speaking from no sides. I'm not on side of Taliban, near side of the previous government or current government. Okay. I'm an independent Afghan mm. who is independently working in Afghanistan. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that I'm happy that, that the invasion is over, but I'm not taking any side. If I'm taking names, it does not mean that I'm against somebody or whatsoever. I'm merely quoting the history and those history which are, you know, the documented history. Anybody who want to check some of the books, I can reference them and they can check and read it. But I'm going to speak as well. So names like Dostum, who was warlord, who killed, documented by BBC, 5,000 Taliban, who what's were surrendered name? to him. What's his name? Dostum. Is this the guy who fled to Turkey? <laughs> yes. So he's in Turkey now. No, no, he's in Tajikistan now. Is it? So he he's in he fled to Tajikistan now. He's a war criminal. Like he's done like they say. Yes. I don't know stories. I heard stories that he put five thousand Taliban into a container and yes. threw them in the desert and some kind. I don't. I heard. I don't know how true this. Yes, I mean I can go in details of each person, but I'm just merely quoting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're short for time. Yeah, yeah. So they put those people in power. Mm. And the families who were killed, they did not bother about the families of Taliban. Okay, every Taliban you have killed, he has a son, grandson, or so whatever. Mm. What will happen to them? Yeah. They put all those people in power, corruption on the rise, and why Americans uh, put the corruption in order so they can channel the money back to America. Like each person was earning a monthly salary 60,000, 200,000. My father was sub governor of Nuristan. Mm. sub governor third position in Afghanistan is a big position. Mm. So I personally talked to Americans, to the army, and mostly were subcontractors by the army, like Blackwater, Titan, and uh, Casey, they were the subcontractor. And each army person, he had salary of 60,000, 30,000 monthly salary. Can you believe that? Monthly, wow. Simple people. And the reason they're saying, okay, you know, we are funding Afghanistan, and we spend this much money, that money was channeled back to America. Mm. Like, can you believe in the camp? I've personally visited American camps in Afghanistan. They call base. A, a cup of Pepsi. Do you know Pepsi would cost $49 in the camp? In the outside, you can buy it with 50 cents. Oh my gosh. Washing your clothes, washing your clothes, one pair of clothes would cost you $100 inside the camp. But outside the camp, it would cost you 10 cents. So wow. that's how they channel the money. They brought, they send the money to Afghanistan mm. and then they channel it back through themselves and their contractors to wow. send it back to America. So that's the one story. So 9-11 and jungle, uh, we will go on the next phrase. It, it destroyed the whole country. It kills more than a million people every day. 9-11 in America was every day 9-11 Afghanistan. No place was safe. And American, they put wrong people in power. Yeah. Corruption was the highest level, which we will, of course, in discussion, talk mm. about it. And many uh, family were lost in the country yeah. infrastructure in the zero. And then they're saying we have spent the money, where is none of the, uh, you don't have infrastructure in the country. And yeah. most money was spent in the defense, which was channeled back to America. Can I ask, Sister Marwa, did, you, did your family, um, did your family, did you have any family casualties, like or people that you knew uh, when, let's talk about, before America, I don't know if you know, like if you if you knew, like before Americans arrived mm -hmm. to after the Americans arrived, did you have any family casualties, like for example, because of the war? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when my dad was there, um, he told me a story about himself. He was, I believe, 20 and he was going to school. Um, he was on one of those, uh, I don't know, you would call it like the, the big buses. Yeah. And um, the uh, the American, I believe it was the American tank or the Soviet Union tank, one of them, he, uh, they just came right on top of the bus and anyone who was in front of the bus literally just died and my dad was in the back. So the front seat came upon his um, uh, legs and he still has scarring till this day and mm -hmm. somehow he was able to get out. Um, and um, so was, that, was that a bomb attack or? No, it was just a tank going over the bus. Oh, a tank going over them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, and you know, do you have family members like, for example, when 
Taliban was ruling, you know, because we do see these images of women in absolute burqas where even the eyes covered. And, you know, these, these images, you know, that the Western world was sharing of, you know, these women who are there and they're going to be stoned to death or some kind of, I don't know how much you know about this, but any fa female family members, did they ever mention to you how the Taliban treated them? You know, mm -hmm. both of you guys. Is it so 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 back uh, back then when the when the Taliban first came i heard stories like from my family members that they were pretty strict like they had curfew in place um women were not allowed to go outside without a male partner um they did have to wear the full burqas like the 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 blue hijabs that you guys see yeah. Um, and yeah, I believe I didn't hear about like any stoning or any of that, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, I do see it from the Western media, mm -hmm. but now, um, I'm hearing that they're more open-minded and, um, I mean, if you watch the, the biggest newscast of Afghanistan, which is called Tolo News, mm -hmm. uh, the, the reporter was a woman. And uh, she was interviewing uh, a Taliban. So, mm. um, so yeah. brother Rahmatullah. So, did any of you have, like, how was it? I don't know if you know yourself, but by any family, female family members, um, when Taliban, we're talking about Taliban twenty years ago, maybe, or you know, how were they then? Is it true, like, you know, they wouldn't allow girls to go school, um, and you know, all these accusations? I don't know. Is it is it true? Can you educate me? Yeah, Ahi, uh, Taliban from 1996 to 2001, uh, they were all people who came from Madrasa and young individuals, they barely passed 30s, and they were implementing, they, they thought they'd be implementing Sharia, but it was no longer Sharia. Say like, that again? Uh, it, they were trying to implement Sharia, but it was no longer Sharia. It was an extreme form of Sharia yeah. that it was no longer the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala implemented. Yeah. For example, people would get beat up for their beard being short, for not wearing turban, uh, for female not going to, uh, you know, uh, for female going to school, education, so on and so forth. That part of the history, and no, uh, no doubt that they had huge problems. They had huge, huge problems so amongst themselves. Can we say, instead of using, I'm, I'm, I'm not blaming you. I know what you're trying to say. But to, instead of using, because it can come across wrong, extreme form of Sharia, can we say that it was a lack of the Sharia? There was, no, yeah, I, there was I, sh I, Sharia missing because... You know, as I said earlier, they were using extreme form. It was no longer Sharia. Exactly, yeah. So it's no yeah. longer Sharia. Because I know some people are going to... Because they yeah. already have the specific no, Sharia. No, no. When you no, say no, extreme, they, they're thinking, oh, no, no, Sharia they, has they, different they, levels now. They they went no, to... No, no, no. There is no yeah. level. I said they were using extreme form, which was no longer Sharia. No longer Sharia. That's it, yes. Yes. So those rules. And internally, they had problems. They had like Bachabazi problem, uh, you know, having boys around them, which was a big problem. They had problem. I mean, we can list them. And most of the thing which, of course, um, the media is saying, it's not hundred percent true, but they did have problems like you, stoning can people. Can you elaborate? I'm so sorry. Can you just elaborate? You know Fine. the Banjabazi. I, I don't need to go into detail, but there might be some That's people fine. they don't know what you're talking about, and because the thing is, it's you don't need to go into detail. But there are warlords who would use these boys, who were, I think, dressed as, I I don't know. I've seen like not even some, yes. They, the Banjabazi is a, a local term. Which basically mean that you're use uh, you know we have this uh, gay system which yeah. is labeled very nicely but in Afghanistan it's Bajabazi. Okay. So basically it's a, a person who is a warlord or who is a commander who is a powerful guy. He has one or two boys, and he sleeps with them. He makes them dance and blah and so on and so forth. Okay. So that okay. was the term Bajabazi. Okay. They had that problem which was very common unfortunately. Yeah. The second problem they had was uh, the the treatments of women towards the education, so on and so forth, the treatment of men. And it was, the judgment was only on the table, whatever man decide, that's a judgment. There was no proper government system, no proper judicial system. Um, and the other problem that they were facing is that following one opinion always, that was the only opinion they believed and they couldn't agree with other opinions. Yeah. So of course they had uh, many problems and now they've come completely different people, but I would say it's too earlier to accept what they're saying is their mere rewards. Yeah. We haven't seen them in action. So we will yeah. see them in action. We will discuss, of course, we have time. We will go to that details as well. Okay.
Sister Mara, um, so do you trust, like for example, as a Muslim woman, do you trust what the Taliban is saying when it comes to, for example, well, how they're going to treat women? Because at the end of the day, let's be honest here, you know, we don't care who it is, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we have to be just here. Um, like what they were doing before, like women not allowed to be educated, not work, all these kind of stuff. I mean, this is very far from the Sharia, you know. Um, you know, and then the, yes, you know, we know the Prophet ﷺ did say that the best place for a woman is her home. Except this doesn't mean you don't let them go out because you know we know Umar ibn Khattab boycotted his son because his son said, "I'm not going to let my wife go to the masjid." And he he said, "This is against the Sunnah." So the thing is here, uh, we know Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu, and he even appointed a woman to manage the markets. So the thing is here answers. that we can see, and we know how, uh, mm. I wouldn't say harsh, but you know how the, Umar ibn Khattab was. And, you know, him to appoint um, someone, a female, to manage the markets, etc. And even there's a, there's a narration that says that, you know, once he was corrected by the same woman, when it came to the mahar of the uh, females, you know, when he said yeah. that women were asked for too much mahar, and the, the woman quoted the Quran ayah, and he said, no, this is the right of what Allah has given us. You know, Umar ibn Khattab said the woman is right and Umar is wrong. And if we look, and this is what we see the beauty of Islam in, you know, people think the more you make it haram and everything is haram, you know, that means you're following the correct Islam. Everything is haram, everything is restricted. And this is not the case because you know, we know the sunnah of the Prophet is that he would always pick an easier option. So as a Muslim woman, do you think what the um, Taliban are saying, can you, are you, can you trust them? Um, have they really changed? Have they learned a lesson? Have they come to the correct understanding of Islam or are you skeptical? Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's really hard to say now because it's only been like a week or like five days that they have, you know, um, taken over the land. And I mean, so far what I've been watching um, on YouTube, there's this guy called Hamayun Afghan. He's an interviewer okay. and he's on the ground in Afghanistan. And um, he uh, interviewed um, the Taliban there currently right now. And he also interviewed like people, uh, regarding like, are you scared? Um, do you fear them? Um, and majority of them, you know, say positive things about them. So, uh, I mean, I personally don't care who's, you know, um, ruling the land as long as secular governments are no longer there, right? And as long as the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being applied there, right? And and I know for some women here in the West, that's really- I, I was, I'm, I'm so sorry, Sister Mara, forgive me for, I mean, just to me, like a lot of people watching this, I mean, the Western world watching a Muslim woman, 21 years old, Marwa in California, saying that mm -hmm. she wants the secular law out of there is like, I mean, we came there to rescue you. We came there to, you know, you know, the white man's burden. You know, we came there to, you know, save you and away from this oppressive Taliban. Uh, t Taliban, and you're here. You, you, you want Sharia law, and you don't want a secular government. Can you elaborate on that? Because that, that to me is profound. You know, someone watching this in the West well, are going to be like, you know, gobsmacked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, if you think about it, um, it's 2021, right? And women cannot go to school, get a job, go to the beach, or accompany their children, right? But if they go against what they are ordered to wear and will end up getting fined or arrested, right? And the, here I'm not talking about Afghanistan, I'm talking about France, right? So if you think about it, in Afghanistan, right, um, people like women here in the West think that freedom and not being oppressed comprises of not wearing the hijab, right? Not like going out with a male companion and all that, right? But this is, this is like, this is all of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compromised within the Sharia law, right? Mm -hmm. And um, for some uh, young adults, especially here in the U.S., this is hard to take in because they haven't been educated on their deen, because they haven't been um, you know, seeing the, the actual Islam for what it is, right? Um, they've always seen men with bearded guys and guns holding a gun over a woman, right? Yeah. Which is coming from mainstream media from the West. Well, of course, the, 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 the America admitted that they spent a, a half a billion pounds on fake propaganda videos. Half a billion, not a million. 500 yeah. million pounds on fake propaganda videos. Just to touch upon something, Sister Murray, you said something about 
uh, females not being able to go to school with hijabs, etc. Some people might think you're talking about Afghanistan. I'm assuming you're talking about maybe France, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, France. Just, yeah. just to clarify that, because you know when you talk yeah. about they're not allowed and this, that, the first thing that comes to people's mind is Taliban. Here we go again. Actually, we're talking about France here. But yeah, carry yeah. on, please. Yeah, so I mean, um, my only advice for my fellow Afghans and Muslims here in the US and in the West in general is to be careful about your sources, right? I see people posting and reposting stuff. Um, like there was a cartoon picture of this girl and she was holding her piano and she was wearing the burqa. And then behind her yeah, was yeah. Um, a bunch of Taliban carrying guns on top of her. <laughs> like what this shows me is that before we even allow the Taliban currently to even implement what they're trying to implement, right? We're already coming to conclusion because of what happened to the past, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you can't do that. That's, that's exactly. not there was, there was a woman who escaped Afghanistan and she, I think there was a little glimpse of it was on BBC and she was, mm -hmm. she's like, we came here, the Taliban's going to kill us woman. Like she was like proper dramatic and, and I, I think it was fear mongering. We can't even really blame her. And in the context where, yes, the Taliban before may have been oppressive. I don't know about killing, may have been really oppressive towards the woman, which is against the, the Sharia, uh, the, uh, you know, very clearly. So they were very, very um, scared, you know, subhanAllah. So I think there is some kind of indoctrination uh, where this, where people are scared, that people are holding on to planes. When I saw that video of people falling off the planes, well, I thought that's not real. That's photoshopped. And I couldn't believe that actually people were holding on to that plane. You know, and I did, I, Brother Rahmat, maybe you can correct this for me, but that whole mayhem happened in that airport because the people were told that the West are accepting refugees or something along those lines. That is the reason why, am I correct to say that, that it wasn't because they were running from Taliban, but it was that they were told that the doors were open to the Western world. Is that correct? Yes, Akhi. Yeah, that's correct. Actually, this disaster is also created by Western countries. Like... Taliban have announced honest, uh, uh, the forgiveness, they've forgiven everyone in Afghanistan. But I would say Taliban should ask for forgiveness from other people as well, because they have also killed and hurt innocent uh, civilians in Afghanistan. What the Western countries, they did, what they do right now, they're actually planning in that way. Yeah. They have spent money on educating people. And now they're announcing every country that I'm accepting 20,000 people without passport, without visa, just come to the airport. Yeah. And many people are coming there, not because they're scared of Taliban, yeah. just because they want to have access to the West, economical markets, so on and so forth. And the second thing is what they do, they want to take all the educated people, the skills workers. So once they're, they're gone and the country is empty, with people, because we only have 20% people who are educated, the 80% oh are not educated. Yeah. If you take the 20%, then what left there? Coming mm -hmm. to the women part. There is a huge uh, hypocrisy, unfortunately, when we are talking about women rights. Yeah. And we only, when we talk about women rights, we go to the Muslim countries like yeah. Yemen or Somalia. Uh, we go to Afghanistan and Pakistan and those countries. Yeah. But let's talk about women rights in the Western countries. Yeah. They are getting their rights? No. For example, in Germany, that country that I'm living, every yeah. hour there's a domestic case against a woman. Every hour. Right yes. now, we have spoke one domestic case already happened in America. There are 130 million people with HIV diseases. The single motherhood. Even even in London, one they say that there's one million people in London that have some kind of sexual disease. Yeah, I mean, look at the the single motherhood case. Look at the, the streets of California. Yeah, London, the homeless. We do not have a single homeless woman in Afghanistan. Yeah, but there are also women. Please respect them and give them some rights. Now, if we come to Afghanistan again, the hypocrisy continues with their clothing. Yes. If they wear the clothes and the Western countries, they are subjugated, they have been forced to wear these yes. clothes. If they pushing it to not wear in Afghanistan. So if the same woman she's choosing to wear in Afghanistan, yeah, then it's a problematic, it's fine. If she's not wearing it, it's not fine. I don't know, the hypocrisy level is very high in the exactly. Western you know, countries. We have a white, white man's burden. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> yeah I've heard that actually. Burden syndrome. Is it a syndrome? Like, what's it called? Hijab, is it white man's burden syndrome? Yeah, I think we should have another one. It's white woman's burden syndrome because this is all, you know, feminists coming to rescue the I think uh, it, Muslim. It, it can be Muslim a big part of the podcast. It can be a big podcast. For example, in Saudi Arabia, Saudi yeah. was chopping heads. They were not concerned about that, but they were concerned about driving. 
Yeah. For example, right now, you should not be concerned about women educated in Afghanistan. They are all married. They all have children. They have beautiful life. Yes. Nobody is single in Afghanistan. Yeah. You have single motherhood case in the whole America. Solve that first. If you're yeah, exactly. too concerned you know, about human lives, then go to Africa, solve their humanitarian cases, give them facilities for the laborers and to live and at least be safe. Millions of women are dying every year. Mm. The education is more important or life is more important. Exactly. So I think they should take care of these matters first before they point out fingers to Afghanistan. Exactly. Now, let's talk about Afghanistan. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, you have people, absolute hypocrites, a fake ex-Muslim. Yeah. There's this woman called Yasmin. I don't know what her name is. An absolute, you know, hypocrite, you know. Um, she's there to talking about women's rights and stuff like that. And she live, lives in America. And I'm just trying to find the article here as I'm speaking. That's why I was scrolling. Uh, not that I was listening. I was that's listening fine. to you. Basically, I, I there was, was um, yes, CJ Wollerman. I think that's what his name is. And he made a point where he was talking about, I'm trying to find it here. There were some stats that he gave about 50,000 women per day or something like those nights that forced prostitution and all this kind of stuff in the American world. If you look into the American world with the, the, with the porn industry and what is going on on a pandemic level where you have people, you know, incest levels, you know, people who are, I'm so sorry, sister, Wallahi, please forgive me. And, and Wallahi, would you not? But I don't even want to go into details. It's crazy. The stuff that's going, you know, um, uh, against, the Muslim, um, against the Western women, you know, they are made to feel so ugly. I'm reading a book called Beauty Sick. I mean, if you watch that, if you read that, um, the author is basically talking about the sickness that these young girls have, that they are fasting. You know, we fast as Muslims in Ramadan, yeah? These girls are systematically fasting to have the perfect body. They are not happy with their self. They can't go out without makeup. They are doing plastic surgery that is killing them. I read an article where a Brazilian woman or whoever, they're going to get certain implants and they die in the process. I mean, they're literally dying and they come here and making it seem as the Muslim woman is the, you know, the one who needs help. When you are drowning, you're literally drowning and you're here trying to help someone else. So there is big hypocrisy happening there. Akhi, and these people I are just taking uh, advantage of it. Akhi, I have four sisters, yeah? Yeah. And I've never heard from them or from other relatives of mine that they're going through some sort of depression. When I came to yeah. the West and talked to every sister, she is going through some sort of depression. Either yeah. she's insecure from her body, yep. From her look or she's insecure because she doesn't have a boyfriend or men are not looking at her wallahi yeah. the disaster that's happening to female in the western countries yeah. the pressure that they are under i mean the subjugation that they are getting right now here they have been sexually objectified that that's not a concern of the media but yeah. what's the concern if a girl is going to the school in afghanistan or not that's a concern and do Let's they really care about problems yeah. Do they really care about that? Let's be honest here, yeah? No. Did America and the Western world go to Afghanistan because the, Mus because the Muslim women there were not allowed to go to schools and are being oppressed? Let's be real here. Did the American, Sister Marwa, do you believe that the American government and the British government and the Australian government and these governments who have committed war crimes, they have committed war crimes, that a this 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 absolute scumbag filthy this there's a guy called Harris Sultan an absolute scumbag yeah. he actually well he was trying to get me banned from Australia check this out yeah one of the reasons he wanted me banned from Australia which I'm gonna go Australia and I'm gonna take a picture with a kangaroo and send it to him anyways yeah while having coconut water um he wanted me banned the reason he wanted me banned is because he this is his accusation so he's he's complaining to the Australian government about me and here's the following. Ali Dawa accusing the Australian government of war crimes. Australia itself, if I'm not mistaken, very sure there was an article, they themselves yeah. accept that war yes. crimes happened. But yes, you, have have this, you have this guy who has, you know, is, who's an insecure white boy wannabe, uh, this insecure guy who's trying to uh, suck up to the Australian government by saying, hey, look, man, he's accusing you guys of war crimes. With well, the Australian government themselves, the point I'm trying to make here is how insignificant the Muslim life is in, in his eyes, so much so that he is trying to defend the Australian government, which he, is a ref he was a refugee. Yeah, he was a refugee who uh, um, claimed asylum there. Yeah, probably because of the false pretense of I'm an ex-Muslim. They, they want to kill me, mm -hmm. you know, like we got nothing better to do and go after uh, little um, intellectual midgets like you, you know. So the thing is, and I've seen his Instagram. He keeps posting muscles like a very insecure guy. Like all his, way, all his, all his Instagram was about muscles. So you can see he's a very insecure person. But what mm -hmm. really caught my eye was that not, not just his Instagram. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, like, I found it very funny. I went his, on his Instagram. Well, like, Aki, most of his pictures, yeah? Most of his pictures. I lived the Jahiliya life, yeah? Okay, I had moments of my life when I was a bit insecure and I would always take pictures in the gym, like, oh, look at my muscles. Oh, look at me. I look so, you know, and all his pictures are like <laughs> trying to seem uh, strong. And there's, there's a statement, you know, the stronger you try to look, the weaker you are. But anyways, let's move away from this little boy. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to comment on this, Akhi. I have debated him in 2009. What, the boy? Uh, we had a, yeah, the boy. The, the boy? The boy, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've debated him and I asked him for, on the atheistic ground, yeah. what reason do you have to not kill people? And exactly. he was actually... I mean... No, no, to your, to your worldview... I'm so sorry, Sister Mario, we're going to have a tangent here. Yeah? According to his worldview... Him and and I'm not even gonna my phone. My phone's more intelligent the, than him. Him, my, him and my socks brother. are the same thing. Yes. But, you know what's yes. the difference between me uh, destroying my socks and destroying him? Yeah. And let's say argue physically. They're both made of atoms, and it's just a rearrangement of, of atoms. And to his world view, he has no grounds to even talk about morality. L little boy. Anyway, he's a midget. Anyway, let's move away from this little boy. Uh, That's sister, true. Actually, yeah. I will come back on the Afghanistan this uh, women issue. So actually, yeah. I was debating another Australian ex-Muslim. Okay. And she told me that Islam is saying, wear your clothes. I said, secularism is saying, take off your clothes. It's the same thing. <laughs> so where's your choice? You know, so she said, I want to be free. I said, so where's your choice? Islam is saying, wear secularism, take it off. So where's your choice? No, do you know what's important, brother, uh, Rahmatullah? Check this out, yeah? People come, you know, a lot of sisters come and say, um, I choose to wear the hijab. And I go, no, you don't choose to wear the hijab. You wear the hijab because Allah told you to. I don't choose to grow the beard. Allah told me to. I don't choose to wake up a fajr. I don't say, oh, today I choose to wake up a fajr. No, Allah told me to. But what they misunderstand is the they make it seem like the Western world. Now, I'm not saying all of them, yeah? They make it seem as if they have a free choice to wear mini skirts. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because I, I, I used to do Uber. And I would pick certain customers where they would take off their heels and they would carry in their hands and they would walk barefooted. Like, cave, like, um, like some of them, like, you know, like cavemen used to walk barefooted. I'm not saying they are, yeah? And before anyone starts thinking I'm attacking them. What I'm trying to say is they would walk because they're bleeding. And mm -hmm. if you're dressed up like that in winter, are you really choosing to, or are you programmed to by the beauty industry, which is a multi-billion pound industry that is making you feel insecure and ugly and so much so that you have to meet these demands. So the question that needs to be asked is, do you choose to, or are you forced to? If you are told what to think, how can you tell me you're free? So yes. that's what they don't understand. And because they're uh, subconsciously programmed um, and um, coerced into this, they think they have a choice. What they don't realize is that you are coerced into this without realizing. Yeah. Uh, let me comment on the Afghanistan issue of the women. Yes. So certain things which were actually socially and culturally, uh, every country need time to grow and to come to a certain level, just like Saudi, was yeah. not allowing women to drive. It wasn't because of religion. It was a culture. Yeah, exactly. Similarly, in Afghanistan, it wasn't because of the religion. They didn't want their women to go to universities or other places. It was mostly culture. And now American can't say, you have iPhone 10 in Afghanistan. It's me because I invaded you and I brought you iPhone 10. Yeah. So it was actually the culture around the world. Just West have been through the same culture, same period. We all, every country, the same period. In Afghanistan, the period was 1991 because of the war. And then from post 2000, people have grown up. They have, have a they, 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 they were educated. Not only women, even men were not educated. Yeah. Post 2000, men mm. got educated. They yeah. went on to universities, other places to get education. But right now, yeah. Taliban, they have said uh, that we would allow women to come on the TV. They will allow them to go on education, uh, take the education, go to universities. I mean, they have said it. It's And they can't even ban it because if they ban it, people won't accept it. You understand? Okay. So, so th that's the concern that um, Western countries should leave it to the Afghan. Let them decide between themselves. Women are our mothers. They are our sisters. They are, they are our wives. We respect them. And we would never take away their rights. Yeah. If a woman is uneducated, then the whole family is uneducated. Exactly. So we would definitely, exactly. everybody would want their wives and sisters to be educated. Exactly. So that's not the concern that Western countries should have. Exactly. I would suggest if Western countries can leave us alone, yeah. and just mind their own business no. i will genuinely bake them a cake i don't even know how to bake cake but i will learn it and bake them a cake and give it to them as a thank you message yeah, exactly you know not just afghanistan leave the whole middle east alone please. yes yeah not yes. just afghanistan yani yeah. we've got 10 minutes 11 minutes because i'm going to pray maghrib um i forgot what i was going to say uh yeah so what was i going to say okay let's touch upon uh for example um the death toll that 
happened in Afghanistan. Yeah, let's touch upon that, inshallah. Uh, let's give it five minutes. So, if I'm not mistaken, about a million people were killed in Iraq. Yeah, massacred in Iraq. Yeah, we know people like WikiLeaks leaked this information, and now he's on the run. You know, freedom yeah. of speech, freedom yeah, of, of course. Speech, yeah, um, mm -hmm. but it's okay. So he's on the run, and Afghanistan. We're talking about half a million people that were killed. Yeah. Yeah? Actually, more than half a million people. More there, than half, this no, is, this is just, just half a million people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These are just. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. These. These are. We're generous here. Yeah. Half a million people killed, and what happened? And look at this. The America Americans leave, and in a matter of days, the matter of days, Taliban take full control. Was the government? Let's talk about actually about, about the government as well. Was the government corrupt before? Okay. If you do you want me to start. You can. Tomorrow? We've got. Let's give. Let's give that four minutes. Okay. So I have met ministers. Okay, minister of education, minister of uh, foreign affairs, minister of uh, technology. Every minister, because I'm in heavily involved in Afghanistan. Uh, we have big, big projects. So one time, I asked a minister to give me a land to build orphanage. Uh, mm -hmm. Governor as well. He told me, since you are doing Sharia work, Islamic work, I will speak from Sharia perspective clearly that I will take forty thousand from you. $40,000 as a bribe. So for you to do something Islamic or to build an orphanage. Oh my God. Can you believe that? Me. So there were $4 billion every year. That was the level of bribe people were paying $4 billion. Oh my gosh. Every year. And I would tell you, there is nothing that <clears throat> people were easily asking for money. So the, the corruption was in highest level. And you cannot imagine. Corruption was the highest level. Only few people they had the money because they were on the top position. You, if you want to be governor, there was a price tag for that. If you want to be governor, 150,000 you need to pay. Oh if gosh. you want to be MP, you have to pay like 300,000. Was literally, look, I'm speaking from the, I'm not saying I'm a nobody. My father was sub governor. Mm. I'm heavily involved in Afghanistan government with the people and not as a part of their team whatsoever because we have projects there. Mm. So everything, the price tag was there. If you want to do this price tag, I wanted to get a short quote from the minister and the person asked me that you need to give us money. I complained to the minister. I personally met him. My pictures are there. Yeah. And he told me, you know what? Even if I need to do something in another department, I have to bribe them. So oh give them God. the money. So that is the level of corruption was there actually. Do you think Taliban will put an end to this corruption? 100%. Why this 100%? is something we can... Why? How could you trust them so easily? Why 100%? Because the area they are controlling, there's a justice, there's no corruption and there's no bribery. In the street of Kabul, which were controlled by 40 countries, including the Afghan government, yeah. you could not walk with your iPhone. People literally chop your hand and take your iPhone. No way. Yes. Oh you could God. not walk with your own. When I, when I was in Afghanistan, I personally two bodyguards with no machine way. guns. I'm not a big guy. Just to protect my iPhone, my car, oh my gosh. my watch. If me, and, if, if me and hijab go Afghanistan, can we have four bodyguards? Yes, of course you can just have, but now you don't need it. Pictures. <laughs> now, you, now you don't need it. Yeah. I mean, now you don't need it because there's a security. So now why are Afghans are happy? <laughs> yeah. No, why are people happy? Because there will be no corruption, bribery, justice, and the justice was served. If you know the big guys, yeah. you are secure. If you don't know big guys, you're not secure. People couldn't build big guys, houses. Are you talking about me, big guys? <laughs> uh, I'm talking about hijab and you <laughs> not physically I, I mean big guys meaning that if you have a power with the government so the corruption level was there and the country was not in their control That's, okay. and nobody followed the law okay sister Marwa I, I want to ask you a question yeah? basically we're going to wrap up in about 5-6 minutes we're going to go pray um, look the Taliban people say the Taliban is putting a face on yeah okay like I said before I don't know nothing about Taliban I'll be honest I don't know all I know Taliban means like the, the, the Talib like knowledge seekers or something like that yeah mm -hmm. so the thing is here why would Taliban, who's got full power now, want to put a face, uh, a two-face, um, by saying we're going to give women? Why would they do that? If they have the power, why would they do that? What are they fearing? Because the Americans have left. They've got full power. They are more richer than ever because all the one trillion plus pounds that American and their guns and everything they left is now war booty for um, Afghanistan, the, the Taliban. 
what are they afraid of to even give these false promises? Because the last videos I saw of them was in bumper cars in the gym doing exercise. Um, and some of them were doing the exercise a bit wrong. But the thing was, may Allah bless, like, like bless them in the context where it's, it's just miskin, like how you see where he was, he was using the leg machine for bicep curls. But the thing is, um, the thing is here that why are they, what are they afraid of to give false promises? Um... I personally don't think that they're putting it on a two-face, um, just seeing from what like people in Afghanistan are saying. But if they are even putting on a two-face, um, it's either because they want to get everyone on their side, so the people of Afghanistan on their side. Okay. And um, because right now, like the majority of people like that you saw jumping on airplanes, running um, at the airport right mm -hmm. it's because they have a history or they know the history of taliban and how they were oppressive committed war crimes mm -hmm. against their own people right mm -hmm. but i truly believe in and inshallah like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like mm -hmm. you know helps them and this all becomes true um that i i don't think they're putting on a two-face but if they were mm -hmm. Um, I think they should be held accountable, right? For any yeah. atrocities, any yeah. genocide, any misconduct yeah. um, that they are going to commit against the Afghan people. Mm. Um, and even in the US, the US government needs to be held accountable. People living in the US needs to hold the government accountable for what uh, Afghanistan went through mm. in the past 20 years. Yeah. Right. So, and I just want to say one important thing to people posting and reposting political things and cursing and the hysteria um, on um, social media, yeah. that these stuff are not going to help the people of Afghanistan. Yeah. Like, and they will never help the Hashtags people. Hashtags and all those things. Yeah, like I, I see um, women posting pictures of um, people before the Taliban came to Afghanistan uh, wearing like mini skirts. Like, how is that supposed to help the women currently now? Like, are yeah, you trying the, to tell them? Is this that Muslims? It, Who's posting these? Muslims? Yeah, Muslim, Muslim women in America. Wow, we, so, so, so elevated. Wow, mini skirts. Yeah. Wow. But you know, the weird thing the is the a woman could be in yeah. is a mini skirt. Not intellectually. No, she, oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 But you know, the weird thing is that the women who, who call themselves Muslim Afghan women who are posting these stuff, they themselves are not wearing the hijab. They themselves are not wearing modest clothing. So they, like, I can't blame them because they themselves have been assimilated into the Western ideology of exactly. what it means to a woman, yeah. right? But a woman, like, do you think that if you wear a mini skirt and a tank top or go out in a bikini, right, on the beach, that mm -hmm. you're not oppressed? You are so much more oppressed, 100%, right? 100%. Yeah, why, you have why would 100 you, why, men looking at you. No, exactly. Why would you need, look, look, everyone, has, in this country, you can wear whatever you want, I'll argue and say, but why would a woman feel can you think a lot of women are insecure in the context where even if you didn't have the beauty industry and yeah. this model looking, every woman feels some kind of insecurity. It's just, that's just a woman are, you know. And the thing yeah. is, why would, can you feel, can you see how oppressed you are that you have to go out in a bikini? Let's look, look, there's a name given to it, a bikini. It's made like, oh, it's an it's a underwear. It's an underwear. You're going swimming with your underwear. It's like you have strip clubs, which are called gentlemen's club. Yes. Gentleman's club. What the hell, gentleman? What's so gentleman about it that some perverted man is going there to have wherever it may be? Do you get what I'm trying to say? And as Muslim men, me and Brother Rahmatullah, and we're not putting a show on. You're our sister. We're very careful to the words we say, and we put limits. We're like, okay, because of the respect we have towards you, sister. Do you get it? I don't want to go into certain details, mm -hmm. and because we have modesty and shyness towards in front of you that we're careful to. So anytime anybody questions a Muslim man oppressing, we are careful to our words to a sister Maro. I don't even know sister Maro. I don't know you. You came, you messaged me on Instagram and said you wanted to join. I know you as a Muslim, a believer and me and brother Rahmatullah, even when certain things, brother Rahmatullah said, sister, forgive me. Da -da 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 -da. We're very cautious and careful. The stuff we say, because the, utmost respect that we have to you because you are our co-sister do you get what i'm trying to say so we can in this this is not a setup i didn't come brother rahmatullah make sure you know this is how we as muslim men are not just towards muslim women i even when i speak to non-muslim women when i talk to them in dawah they might be dressed up in an inappropriate way i refer to them as sister because i believe every woman should have a right to be talked to as a human being not talked to because of how her body shape is but brother mm -hmm. rahmatullah i've got one minute 
any last words, both of you guys, Brother Rahman, can, you, any can, last you, words? can you extend the time? The, can you extend it? Okay, I, I, we can let, try to do a part two. I, I'm, okay. I'm sure, I'm uh, okay, because can we there do a part are two break. after this, like when I mean part two, be... next week, like if this goes good. Is it is it possible? Because you know what? I need to pick yeah. my dad up from the airport. I need to leave here about 10. I have to play Maghrib. I haven't eaten. Yes, and part two will be highly uh, important so we can go to more technical details. Actually. Yeah, sure. What would be part uh, two? Yes. Let's, all right, let's tell the viewers. There's going to be a part two. What would those parts okay. entail? Let's, tell me a bit about okay. the part two. Number one, the profit of war in Afghanistan. How much Americans themselves profited. Okay. Number two, the politi geopolitical reason why Americans went there in the first place. Yeah. And the crime of the black water and other people have committed yeah. the inner circle of the government and what is the future for a taliban and for the muslim Allah. okay good so, in part two we're going to cover that if there's anyone that's watching this if you're mm -hmm. another sister um another but maybe it'd be good to have I, I i believe it's very important to have sisters take on this if there's a sister who's afghani background um who may i don't know maybe studied this or whatever it may be um you can join us with sister Maru if sister Maru wants to join again next week Totally up to her. We can do part two, inshallah. Sister Maro, any last words? No, no, that's it. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, and I do believe that a part two should be a must. Um, there's a lot of things that um, we could talk about further. Inshallah. And definitely, that's what we're going to do, brothers and sisters. We're going to have part two, inshallah. Uh, uh, if you guys and, want part two, comment in the section below, inshallah. And we will have part two. And, and part two, we will discuss what's on the stake for Taliban right now, why they are so kind and nice. Yeah. And are they truly having their true face or what's happening? So exactly, I will share some internal information, inshallah. This is an we're, we're not biased towards anyone here. We're discussing yep, and true. learning, and I've learned a lot. Brothers and sisters, from uh, till next time for part two. You want it? Comment in the section below, inshallah. Uh, if you want to join us, we have one more person that we can join. We can have four people, inshallah. Get in contact with myself. Uh, till next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I will tag brother Nah rahmatullah Nawroz's Na Na link, inshallah, his social media, YouTube. You can follow him for more updates. I'm sure he's going to be talking about mm -hmm. this topic. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you. May Allah bless you guys.